Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. In this episode, I'm talking with studio owner and Acrobatic Arts master teacher, Cheryl Crawford. Let's listen as Cheryl discusses her own highs and lows on the journey of starting an acro program. Cheryl Crawford, hello and welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. It's so great to talk with you today. I think the last time we saw each other in person was when I examined your dancers in Scotland, and that was in 2019. So it's really nice to have some one-on-one time with you today. Oh, it's lovely. I actually cannot believe it's been that long ago. It seems like just yesterday. True. With Acrobatic Arts, It seems like some studio owners and dance teachers are having very similar questions about the acrobatic arts syllabus. So I thought, why not let Cheryl tell her story and hopefully it will answer some of those questions. But before we get into that, how about you tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, what got you involved in teaching and why you wanted to run your own dance studio. Okay, so I um, I grew up in Scotland. I want to say in Fife, but that's debatable because we did move around a little bit when we were younger, but Fife is where I've been the majority of my life. So I started dancing at the age of five, um, purely because my best friend was going to the local dance school and I just fancied going along too. I did not for one minute think that this would then be my you know, career path. It was just something to do really. Um, But then after a few years, I I really started to enjoy it and I started to take it really seriously and quickly realised that this is actually what I want to do with my life. Before that, I I knew I would always work with children because that's just that's just who I am. I just love kids. I love everything about them. So I knew I'd, I'd go down the route of something to do with children and being a dance teacher. It was. So I left school at the age um of 17, I think, 16, 17, and went to a full-time dance college in Edinburgh for three years where I gained my RED teaching certification. And afterwards, I decided that I had a, a brief stint of dancing, but I really just wanted to open up my own school. I really wanted to be a young teacher, actually. So I moved back to my hometown and started a little class where six kids came along. You know, I put an advert in the local newspaper and those six kids came along and then it just quickly grew and grew and here I am 21 years down the line um, with a a lovely dance school that is just it's like a family for our kids. And Cheryl how many students do you have now at your dance school? We have um, about 400 pupils now at this school. So you went from six to 400? Yeah yes we did. That's amazing. And congratulations, I know, especially over the pandemic, it's great that your school is still running and that you still have that many students. So a big congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah, that was tough, but yeah, we got through that. So how did you discover ACRO and what made you want to take the Acrobatic Arts Module 1 certification? So um, along with dance, I've always had a keen interest in gymnastics as well. So I did do a bit of gymnastics as a child growing up and then also I have two children myself my daughter she did gymnastics all through her childhood so I would go along to the classes and sit in you were allowed to sit in the classes then and I learned a lot just from watching that but then acro came when dance moms were big so my daughter who was then about 11 was obsessed with dance moms so I would watch this with her and I'd be watching what these kids are doing and very aware that everything from that side of the world comes over here eventually. So I'm watching thinking, how am I going to be teaching Roland Tinsicas to my kids one day? So I started to research Acro and just found there was nothing here. I could find small snippets of it in other dance organisations, but nothing that really pulled me, nothing that I needed, if you like. 
Um, and then the funny thing is, I think Facebook always just listens to you. It really does. But suddenly, acrobatic arts just started appearing on my Facebook uh, feed. So I was researching this, but realizing that there was no acrobatic arts in the UK um, and there was a course coming up, but, you know, will I go along to it? It's so far away. It wasn't that cheap, but, you know, I I will spend money on good training. Um, so I thought, right, OK, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to go for it. So I booked myself and one of my other staff members and off we went um, to the first acrobatic arts course in the UK. And that was back in 2015. When you took the course, what struck you or impressed you the most when you took your module one certification? Yeah, so I just fell in love with it. It was exactly what I wanted. What I loved the most was the syllabus. The levels, you know, from primary all the way through to level eight, everything was there. Everything was so well laid out. And so if I come back to that role intensica that I wanted to know how to teach, I could work my way back from that scale down the levels to figure out where I needed to start it. I just loved the progressions of it all. I loved that I didn't have to really even, you know, make anything up. It was all there for me. I could walk out that door and start the classes the next day. Um, I, I just, I was so inspired after it. I know a lot of teachers feel that way. So I'm, I'm really glad that you felt that way as well. I'm guessing that you started your syllabus right away with your students. I'm sure you've seen this question on our Facebook a lot, or even in the courses that you teach now, but there can be some growing pains when starting the syllabus with your students. Did you experience that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so we had a lot of kids join the ACRO program right at the beginning. And I would say I'm a pretty strict teacher. So, you know, I wanted them to do what I wanted and when I wanted. and. I had a problem with, you know, the kids that were able to do some skills, but not technically correct. And, you know, you've got to, to get forward. You sometimes have to take two steps back. So that was what I was trying to teach them. You know, let's start at the beginning. Let's work our way up. And there was a battle between some kids and myself. And ultimately, you know, some decided not to continue with the program. But others, the ones that did, are now beautifully technically correct or strong. I found us with the kind of bendy kids, you know, that could all, you know, do these skills to actually pull them back and make them strong first was a challenge. Some stayed with me, some are beautiful and um, others didn't and that's just fine. But I now notice that the kids that have stayed with me, the kids that are younger than them now have these beautiful role models to look up to and aspire to be. Mm -hmm. What would your advice to a studio owner or maybe even a young teacher going through that what would your advice be well just stick to your guns you, you're the teacher you know best i always try and educate my kids as well you know tell them you know don't just don't just do it with them but tell them why you're doing certain things but then also while you are doing that you do have to let them have a bit of fun so i used to always you know make sure i had 10 minutes at the end of the class for them to get out their system everything they wanted to do and um, that maybe wasn't so technically correct but then they feel like they've just you know done something they're happy with mm -hmm. you always want them leaving happy and Absolutely. smiling <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and what helped you the most when you were starting? Were there any resources from acrobatic arts or even outside of acrobatic arts that you could suggest to studio owners and dance teachers? Yeah, um, the biggest help I thought was when we did our first set of exams and the, the teachers meeting at the end, that is what really, really helped me the most. But apart from that, the Facebook page, my goodness, you can just, you can learn every single day of that Facebook page. I really love it. And also our website, it's just got everything. I just love that you don't have to go looking for information. It's there in front of you all the time. Mm -hmm. We try to make it as easy as possible for people to stick to their guns and have success with the syllabus. So it's really nice, again, to hear that all those acrobatic arts resources helped you out you're busy as a studio owner and a teacher, so it's great that you have everything at your fingertips, as you said, that you don't have to go looking anywhere else. That is one way that we can really help everyone. Yeah. You mentioned that the acrobatic arts exams teachers meeting after really helped you. How do you think that acrobatic arts exams helped your students' experience with acro dance? I love that 
it's so different to any exams. You know, I've done exams myself as a, a child and a, a young adult, and it's different from any exams I've ever experienced because the exams are actually being taught in the exam as well, which the kids actually really like. Um, so they're start, they start they grow in confidence throughout the whole exam. They love at the end when you know, a few uh, weeks later, they get the reports back. That is so useful for them. Apart from just the things that they're doing well, it also tells them where they can improve things. And I think that's really, really useful. They love that because then for their next set of exams, they look back those reports and make sure that they really work on the things that they were needing to maybe up their game a little bit with. And what are some of the wins that you and your studio are experiencing since bringing on acrobatic arts? So I know to say it with the dancers that do acro, it's great for their other dance genres as well. You know, when they're going into a jazz class and their teacher's asking who can do who can do this, you know, she'll call it a trick, I'd call it a skill, but there we go. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll always be one of my acro dancers that are able to volunteer to do it. I also notice it when they're doing, you know, maybe their, their local additions for pantomimes or something. They're the ones that are able to do the fancy skills as well that just sets them apart from the other dancers. Are there any surprising outcomes that you didn't expect? Didn't expect to love it as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I love it. <laughs> oh, it's one so class good. I really enjoy teaching. I just, I really get a lot from teaching acro. Oh, that, you know, always touches my heart to hear that. Is there anything you would suggest to a studio owner who is maybe on the fence about taking the acrobatic arts course and they're just not ready to? What would you suggest for them? I would say absolutely go for it. And I think probably a lot of people's reservations is that they're worried they can't demonstrate or haven't ever been able to demonstrate the skills themselves. But you really don't need to at all. I mean, Believe me, I don't get up and start doing all these walkovers myself, but as long as you know how to teach them and we teach that very well, then you're going to manage this program, you know, beautifully. It's, it's really, really good. Cheryl, that is a really good point. A lot of us, especially at a certain age, can't demonstrate these skills anymore. But if you have the tools and the knowledge and you've been teaching other genres, it's very easy to follow the syllabus. Thanks for bringing that up. And now, Cheryl, you you love this acro dance program so much that you've actually taken it to another level by taking the path to become a course conductor and an examiner with acrobatic arts. Can you tell us how that process was and what added benefit that gave to you? Yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, it was a no brainer to become a course conductor um, when I was asked because I just love passing all the knowledge that I have on to others with great detail. I just love it. Um, so that makes me really happy. Also asked to be an examiner was um, that was an honor. A bit overwhelming at first, you know, thinking, how will I know exactly how to mark the kids? But my goodness, we are taught exactly how to mark the kids and, and we're trained constantly so that we're very good at it um, and I, I just love that I love going into the exams having the kids come in having fun with them just watching them relax making them better in the exam and being able to actually up their marks as we're going along is lovely I really really enjoy that um, and meeting all the teachers as well great you mentioned that the first course in the UK was in 2015 the first certification mm -hmm. course and now we're coming up to 2022 20, 2023 20, and there's many courses, and I know the UK is also running in person and online, but maybe you can tell us some of the dates and places that will be available for the people and teachers in the UK so that they can look out for it and maybe register if they're interested. Yeah, sure. So we're, we're really um, becoming busy again here in the UK. We're really excited to be back um, both in person and online. So we're going to be doing our, our module one uh, training and our module two and aerial and back handspring and they're going to be in derby and walking this october and for those who can't make it in person there's going to be some online and you know at acrobatic arts here in the uk we hear from studios every day looking to hire our certified teachers and it's just a it's a skill set that's in high demand and growing and just having acro dance certification on your cv it's going to just increase 
your value as a teacher and undoubtedly create more um, opportunity for you and your students. Um, and so for those who are already module one certified, module two is just the next step to completing your certification and growing as your students grow. And the module two and our aerial and back handspring, which is a prerequisite to the module one, they are only offered in person. So it's also a, a great way to network with other um, teachers as well, which is nice here in the UK. So the dates that uh, we have are October 8th in Derby for our aerial and back handspring, October 9th in Woking. And then we have some module ones, October 22, 23 and October 29, 30. And then looking ahead to next year, early next year in February, we will have a module two um, also in Woking. Oh, that sounds fantastic for everyone in the UK. I would definitely register if I was in the UK and needed or was interested in those courses. And Cheryl, just to end our conversation today, you mentioned that the certified teachers are in high demand in the UK for studios. Mm -hmm. And I feel lucky that I get to talk to you because you are a studio owner and a dance teacher. But as a studio owner, what, what's the added benefit of hiring a certified teacher? I would only hire a certified teacher because I know that then they ha they're full of knowledge then basically. And, and that's what I want from a teacher. I want them to be so knowledgeable. And it's important for me that my children, my dancers are safe. And so with a certified teacher, you know that safety is going to be high on their um, agenda as well. Cheryl, is there any other advice you would give to studio owner, uh, dancers even, or teachers? Oh, just what are you waiting for? Get yourself certified and um, just yeah, have have a look um, at, at what we do. It's just, it's brilliant. Your dancers are going to absolutely love it. I would say it's one of their most favourite classes of the week. And um, I just think as a teacher, it's just a, it's a nice class to teach. It's a nice fun class. Um, you get a lot from it. Yeah, look us awesome. up, have a look. Oh, Cheryl, it's so great. I love your passion. It definitely comes through when talking to you. So thank you so much for sharing your passion with us, your experience and your love of Acro. Thank you, pleasure as always. Studio owners, I hope you are inspired by Cheryl's story and realize that her acro success could be yours as well. Please keep sending your amazing questions to podcast at acrobaticarts.com. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.